Are you tired of boring square images in Canva? Today, I'll show you how to put your photos in cool shapes. We'll look at how to use frames and grids and give your designs a little more style. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're looking at how to put your images and shapes in Canva. Now I use the word shapes because that's the word that most people use, but actually we need to understand that Canva has three different concepts of shapes. First, there are frames, which allow us to put an image or video into them. Next, we have grids, which are like multiple frames put together. And finally, we actually have shapes, which allow us to put colors or text in them. So let's start by looking at frames. I created a new Canva document here. It's 20 inches by 10 inches, but it doesn't really matter. To use frames, you wanna click on elements over here on the left. And there's a couple different ways we can see the frames available to us. We can click the word frame, or I can type in frame up here. Either way works. And you'll see that here is a list of frames. I'll click see all so I can get the better view. And now we have this list of all the possible frames available in Canva. There are tons of them. I don't know how many there are, but they just go on forever, it seems. Certainly dozens. We even have all the letters down here and numbers also. There are many creative options. We can tell they're frames because they have this cartoon landscape in them. So I'll choose one that I like. I think this one looks pretty cool. I can just click on it to add to my canvas or I can click and drag. I'll click and drag and I'll let go. Now let's add an image to this frame. You can use a photo that you uploaded or you can choose one of Canva's existing photos. I'll use an existing photo by clicking photos down here. Let's search for something, I don't know, beach. And I'll use one of the free images here. This one looks pretty nice. I'll click and I'll drag it into my canvas. And you'll see that when it's in the frame, it snaps in there. So I'll let go. And now my image is inside the frame. Now there's lots of ways we can customize the placement of this image if you're not happy with it. First of all, you can double click the frame. And then you can move your image around back and forth. I can position it how I like. I can click on the corners to resize it. If I hold shift, I can change the proportions. But I'll let go of shift, I'll just keep the proportions the same. I can also click this rotation button down here if I want. Now one thing to keep in mind is that your image will have to cover the entire frame. So I can't actually drag my frame anymore to the right because it would leave a gap over here. And I can't drag it down further either because it would leave a gap on the top part. So you can generally do what you want with the image, but you have to make sure that you're covering all of the frames area. And when you're finished, you can click done here or just click off the image. I'll click done. And we have the repositioned image. Now I can resize the frame itself. So I just click once on the frame and then I can resize it like so. And I can rotate it. I can click the size to crunch it together if I want. So that's how you control the frame itself. Now I can also give the frame a border. So I can click these lines up here that say border style. And I'll choose a solid border. You can make a dash if you like though. Let's go back to solid. I can make it thicker like that. You can make the corners more rounded if you like. There's all sorts of options you can do here. I'll leave it sharp. Now, if you want to change the border color, what you do is click this little box here that says border color. So I'll click that. And I can make it something else. Tan, blue, pink. Now, if you want to get rid of the border, just click these three lines again and then click the cross over here to get rid of it. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you can style these frames. If you want, you can also use a frame for just a solid color. So I'll drag this frame over here. I'll resize it. And with the frame selected, I'll click the color up here. Let's say I want to make it purple, magenta. And we have a frame where I just added a color to it. But I'll delete this one here. Now, when you select your frame, there's a trash icon here. If you click delete, you have the choice of deleting your entire frame, which will remove it, or just the image from the frame. So that's how you can remove things from your design. Now, let me show you how to download this frame with a transparent background. You can click share and then download. I'll select PNG. Now for transparent background, you have to click this box here, but it requires Canva Pro, so make sure you have that. Then you can click download. I'll choose the location on my hard drive. I'll just give it some name. Now, if I open the file in another program, you'll see that it's transparent. So I open the file here in Affinity Photo, and you can see, in fact, it does have a transparent background. That's what the checkerboard indicates. Now, some frames have more complicated layouts that actually allow multiple images. So if you scroll down, you can kind of see which ones allow that. Here's an image frame with this kind of tear down in the middle. Let's see what we can do with this. I'll make this bigger. Let's look through our photos. I'll add a fire to the left side. I'll add some ice to the right side. So now we have a frame with two different images in it and we can edit them independently. So I can double click on the ice here and I can move that around, resize it, rotate it and I'll click off and then go and I can edit the fire separately. So I'll double click on this side and I can resize it again, move it around and I'll click off. And if I want to delete one of these images, I can select one. I'll click the ice here. I'll click the trash can. I'll say delete image. So it just deleted that one. And if I want to delete the whole frame, I'll click this. Click the trash can, and I'll just say delete frame, and the whole thing's gone. If you want to see more tutorials on Canva, leave a like on this video as it helps me know what types of content my viewers want. And of course, if you have any specific Canva topics you'd like to see, feel free to leave a comment down below. 
Now let's look at grids, and most of what you learned about frames will apply to grids as well. To see a list of grids, I can go back to my Elements tab over here, so I'll click Elements. And then here I'll type Grids. We have a partial list of the grids here, I'll click See All. And just like frames, there's tons of grids as well. And we can see with the grids is that they're all various combinations of frames in different formats. So let's drag one of the grids over, I like this one. I'll place it here. Usually it snaps to the whole screen, but you can resize it if you want. It's much easier to get different perspectives with the grids here. But if you want to lock perspective, just hold Shift and it'll keep the perspective locked. But the controls are pretty much the same as frames. I can shrink it from either side and I can rotate it if I like. So let's go to photos and add some images to our grids. Let's look at cats. I like this one, I'll drag it. And I'll position it over the part of my grid that I want it to be in. So let's put that there. Here's another one. And let's do this one. So we have three different images in our grid. Now, like before, we can double click on the parts of our grid to individually position the images. So this bottom one, I'll double click on it and I can resize it how I want. Maybe I want it to be like that. I'll click off. I can do the same thing for this top left one. Maybe I want it to be big. Let's position it like that. Maybe I want to change this top right one. I'll click on it. Maybe I want to flip it. I'll click flip horizontal. I'll move it a little bit. So it's changed there. Now, just like with frames, we can add borders to our grids. So I'll select the whole thing. I'll click on the three lines here. Let's give it a solid outline. I'll increase the weight. We can adjust the spacing here too. So now I have a border for all our images. And if we want to get rid of it, you can select them all again. Click the border style. And click the cross out sign here. I'll load the spacing back in. And if we want to download a transparent version of this image, we can do the same as we did with the frames. I'll click share. Download. Make sure you have PNG selected. Transparent background. Download. Let's call it cats. I'll open it in another program. And we can see we have a transparent background. To delete individual images, just click on it. Click the trash can and say delete image. And you can always replace it with something else. Now shapes themselves are just for colors and text. Let me show you how to use them. So once again, make sure you're on the elements tab here and you can type in shapes. I have my list of shapes here. I'll click see all. And we have all sorts of shapes we can choose here. Let's choose an arrow. I can resize it and I can type in it. So let's make the text bigger. I'll change the font. Maybe I'll make it green. I can make it a solid color or I can choose some type of gradient. So this is the main feature of shapes. Now, if you want to put an image in these shapes, once again, you should try using the frames. Pretty much all the shapes here have a frame equivalent. So you can go to the frame list and see if you can find it. Now, another thing designers use Canva for is to make seamless patterns. If you want to learn the easiest way to do that, check out my video on that topic. I'll provide a link right here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.